Good morning, everybody, and welcome to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show that's running out of ideas. Last time, we demolished the first game in the Ratchet & Clank series without using any weapons from Ratchet's gigantic arsenal. And we're not stopping there. We're continuing on to the second game in the series. Can you beat Ratchet & Clank going commando with only the wrench? The rules are just the same as last time. Everything categorized under the weapons menu is banned. Gadgets, meanwhile, are completely allowed, though good luck killing anybody with the Terminator. Holy jeez, Terminator needs a nerf. Compared to the last game, the wrench has gotten a huge upgrade. When throwing the wrench in Ratchet 1, you'd be locked in place for a couple seconds. Going Commando, however, gives the player full control as soon as the throwing animation is complete. On top of that, there are two wrench upgrades encountered later in the game that give the wrench a ludicrous attack power boost, making it a viable damage dealer against almost every enemy. Plus, as long as there's no door blocking your way, running away like a little sissy baby is still a completely viable option. Sorry to disappoint, but there's no bonus challenge this time. I did try a little to go into the spaceship minigames without using weapons, but it doesn't look like there's any way to get the enemies to blow themselves up. And even if there was, they didn't program the menus very well. You press X to select a mission and to fire your gun. The gun doesn't care why you pressed X. The first big roadblock is on planet Siberius. Though the wrench may be more versatile on the ground, it's just as useless as always against flying enemies. The mass thief stays in midair throughout his entire boss fight, requiring you to throw the wrench in first person view. Attacking in first person stops you in place, leaving you totally open to attack. Luckily, you've still got enough time between each shot to get one throw in. But after the convoy phase, you continue the fight in a circular arena. He constantly tries to control the distance by moving just outside your range, but he's also desperate for attention and we can and use that against him. Turn the camera away and he'll swoop in to take center stage. Dodge his attacks while moving just a little bit forward and he'll stay in place long enough for you to get one or two hits in. Repeat until his health bar reaches zero. And in response to all the comments saying Teal Game Master already did this run, nuh uh. In part eight, he clearly watched this cutscene in which Ratchet fires his Lancer, therefore invalidating the entire playthrough. Ha ha, neener neener, I win. On planet Davo is a tank outside of our range guarding the path forward. The normal way past, as with most things in life, is to blow it up, but barring that option, we'll have to play it smart. Climb up the archway dealy thing nearby as high as you can, face the tank, and use your charge boots. You can blast across the chasm and skip killing the tank entirely. The further you get in the game, the more damage enemies are going to be dealing against you. You're going to want to get some armor to make it to the end. You might be tempted to buy armor every time you see it, but I don't think the defense buff is enough to justify the Volt Spence since you can completely skip armor sets when the next tier is available. I recommend buying only the first armor set to help you reach the end game. Then wait until you can afford the ultimate armor, Carbonox. It's a little expensive, but as long as you skip the prior armor upgrades and go back to do all the mini games, you should end up close to the final 1 million volts. And yes, I do legitimately recommend doing the impossible challenge wrench only. Almost all the enemies have close range attacks and die in two hits with the final wrench upgrade. Plus along the way, you'll probably get one or two nanotech level ups giving you a full heal. Even Mega Pete is simple. Just hug the edge of the arena and throw your wrench as he passes by. Once he's dead, you'll get a quick and easy 200,000 volts, putting you well on your way to darned near invulnerability. Approaching the tail end of the game, you'll finally encounter a major devastating roadblock. This door in Damacel guards the Hypnomatic and only opens after you kill every enemy in the area. And this just so happens to be the only required battle with enemies out of your range. But it is actually technically possible to kill these enemies with a very specific strategy found by YouTube user Webment T. Whenever you get enough experience to upgrade your nanotech, there's a giant explosion that deals damage to every enemy around Ratchet. And with smart farming of the protopets, you can get enough EXP for two separate nanotech boosts, enough to kill the robots on the rooftop. But that would take forever, so Oh, why bother? Getting the Hypnomatic may be required, but it's only required in quotation marks. On Grelbin, you can do a ludicrously easy jump from the snowy plains to skip the entire main path. In the final level, Yeedle, you're gonna need a slightly harder route. Right next to your ship are some pipes that are just barely solid enough to do glitchy jumps on. From there, you can take a zigzaggy route on the rocks until reaching the building in the distance. Clip yourself into the building, climb the slanted platform, and walk off just the right spot. Once you land and take the teleporter, you've officially skipped every single hypnomatic section in the game. Hyperstrike the final boss as he politely waits to be murdered and the going commando wrench only run is mission complete. Just like last time, shout out goes to Teal Game Master who already did this run a couple years ago. And no, the cutscene doesn't count. 
it was a joke. Full disclosure, I watched the cutscene too, so the point's kind of moot. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including Andrew Seibert, Mrs. Ekman, Eric Flynn, Les Lamb, R.B. Drock, David 20 Covers, All in O, Mr. Harry Wonka, Alexander Botkin, Chris Nate, Chaz M, Mason 2K, Anu, Salieri, Ross Clark, A Career, A Jazz, Robert B. Brachier, Citrus Lush, Zane Bain, BCR Mainsound, Joshua Bradbury, Vincent Hall, Basinger 313, Yellow Alert, Game Guy Rusty, Anon 42, Suit, Robert Sephazon, Alex Nelson, Pepsi Man, EXE, Christian Long, Jen Duro, Justin L, and Chocolate Boy. 97. Let me know how much this video sucks and how I can improve in the comments below. Plus, how soon do you think is too soon to cover a sequel and are shorter, simpler videos like this okay? I'm really looking for constructive criticism with this one especially so I can get a good idea of how far out to schedule sequel runs. I was thinking at least two videos in between each game from a particular series, but let me know if it should be farther out. And regardless of how much you hate me, constructive arigato for watching and get out of my house.